Hello, today I am creating a journal spread in my Dina Wakely 6x6 using stamps and stencils from Be Crafty. All the products will be in the description box underneath and I'll provide links. And if you like my video today, do please give me a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. And for those of you who are returning, thank you ever so much for supporting my channel. I had a vague idea of what I wanted to achieve with this journal spread um, in that I knew what my focal point was going to be. However, with the background, I was having a bit of a play around to see what happened as I used the products. And I'm starting here by using Distress Crayons. I had gessoed my pages first of all to help the, the Distress Crayons move more freely and I've added a little bit of water each time because I found that when I was trying to smudge them just my finger it wasn't moving as much as I wanted. I wanted a more pastel dreamy look to my background and that I found that worked better with the water. Here I decided that I was going to try to remove some of the crayon and create a sort of ghosted effect. Unfortunately, I think I chose a stencil that was a little bit too fine for that at that moment and also I had left the some of the crayon a bit long um, before I tried to do it. So I sort of gave up on that for the moment and we'll come back to that in a little while. The colours I am using are Peacock Feathers, Twisted Citron and now Picked Raspberry. So this time I chose a more open stencil and I did it straight away after I'd laid the colour down and I found that that worked much better. The kitchen roll has just got a little spritz of water on it's nothing special on there at all. The final colour I'm using in my background is fossilised amber and as I rubbed my page over here the gesso underneath, I don't think I'd obviously left it to dry for long enough. You should really leave gesso for quite a while so that it's it's nicely um, dry on your page before you start adding water and other mediums. So a little bit did pull off, but I then covered that in a moment with some stenciling. I'm using the Distress Crayons through the stencil. Most of it goes actually onto the stencil and then I'm using my finger to rub it into the, the holes of the stencil, so to speak. Now once I had done this, there was quite a thick layer of the Distress Crayon around some of the um, parts of the stenciling, which I wasn't really happy about. I wanted it to be more spread out and not so concentrated. So I got my piece of kitchen roll and I spread that colour out, which meant that I did lose the definition of the stenciling, but I still had some of it there lurking in the background and I was quite happy with that. Now I went back to my um, sunburst and had another go. This time I spritzed the water directly onto the stencil and I found that that worked a lot better. Now I've chosen four um, archival ink pads that I felt matched in with my um, background and I'm using some stamps from the Journaling Girls collection. This first one is one of the little circles from the Journaling Blocks and I'm using the blue archival which I think is Paradise Teal just to create some background interest and then I'm using just some of the little sort of worker stamps from the other journaling girls just to add some little details into the background. This time I am using, I think it's fuchsia, I'm not sure it might be funky fuchsia, something like that, but it's a fuchsia coloured um, ink. And I'm using archival because I've already laid down gesso and I've got distress crayon and archivals are ideal for putting onto lots of different surfaces. And you'll notice that when I'm stamping onto my left hand side of the page I'm putting my hand underneath this is because in this particular journal I'm still quite near to the beginning so if I try to stamp directly onto there because there's not much 
um, underneath I wouldn't get the sort of um, impression that I would like whereas on the right hand side I've got all the pages so now I'm just using I think it's orange blossom archival with this little sort of line stamp and I'm just adding some more pattern to the background I'm now adding some pink Posca pen just to the centers of my flowers just to help them to look more um, blended into my background and then I decided that I wanted to fill my circles with a bit of lightness so I started by using the picket fence distress crayon but I found it wasn't giving me the intensity of white that I really wanted so I got out my white gesso and just added a little bit with my finger to the circles just to make them a lighter spot within my background Now I wanted to work on my focal points, so I'm taking one of the journal journaling girls, I think this one is the elegant girl. I only really wanted the top half of her so I'm really concentrating my ink on that and I'm using archival black ink onto a watercolour cardstock because I wanted to use a, um, a watercolour sort of product. You get the eyes separate so I stamped on some eyes but I didn't want to worry about adding on a, a nose and a mouth. Um, you can draw those in by hand quite easily and then I cut her out here she is and now I'm using one of my own designs of stamps this one is the blossom butterfly and I only want to use the bottom wings because I'm going to create a skirt for my butterfly girl Right, so I cut those out and now I'm going to use some ink tense pencils with my water brush to um, add the colour. Now for large areas I tend to lay down the colour and then pull it out with the water brush. The thing with ink tense pencils is although they are water reactive they are an India ink so they will dry permanent that means that once they are dry you cannot move them anymore so you do need to work relatively quickly with them otherwise um, they will just sort of stay in one wherever you first put them and sometimes I also will take some of the ink from the tip of the pencil I never dip my pencils into water because that can cause the wood inside to rot but I just take my water brush and just take a little bit from the tip so I'm only going to show you colouring one of these um, because I thought once you'd see me do one that would really give you the idea of how all the others work So here she is, my butterfly girl. So I've stuck the three um, butterfly wings to the bottom of her to make her dress. And I'm now just adding some white Posca pen to add some little extra details and highlights. I do this quite often because I just think it just lifts the color a little bit more. I also just added a little bit of a twinkle to her eyes and some extra highlights to her hair. Then I wanted to create some butterfly wings so I'm using a piece of heat proof acetate and the butterfly beginnings stamp 
I put a little bit of anti-static on and then I'm using VersaFine Claire in black and I'm going to put black powder over the top as well to make it really intense. Now when I stamped it the first time I felt it slide so I knew that it had blurred my lines which I wasn't happy with so I decided to have another go and I stamped it out again. Now this time it stamped more clearly but you might be able to see on one of the wings it didn't look like it had stamped as well but once I added the powder over the top that sort of co covered in those lines and it was fine. The best thing to do when you're heating onto even heat resistant acetate is you need to keep that heat tool moving um, otherwise it will even with heat resistant acetate cause it to buckle. So I cut out my butterfly, I chopped off the antennae as I didn't need those and then I stuck the wings onto the back of my girl. I decided that the edges of my pages um, needed to be brought in with a bit of a frame so I'm adding some of that um, paradise teal around the edges just to bring them all in together. I took the sentiment from the blossom butterfly that says blossom like a butterfly and I'm adding it along the edges of my pages with the paradise teal just to match it all in and to add a little bit of extra interest and texture to the background. And this time instead of using my hand under the page I got one of my large acrylic blocks and placed that under the page so that it would provide the resistance I needed to be able to stamp. Now at this point I stamped my sentiment in the blue um, in a minute you'll see that that may change. Once I put my butterfly girl down I realised that I wanted a bit more colour in her wings so I'm colouring onto the back of the wings on the back of the acetate with an alcohol marker or just a blue one just to add a little bit more colour to it I felt that it just needed to tie in a bit more with the rest of the page. And just to make her extra magical I'm adding some of this Stickles glitter gel and this one is moon dust I think there's six in the range but it just gives a little bit of extra sparkle now I decided that where I'd stamped that sentiment it didn't pop enough for me and with the black in her wings and on her body I needed a bit more black in my page so I re-stamped my sentiment and I messed up adding the edging so I had to stamp it again. I still at this point felt that there needed to be something else in the background and I think it, it I felt it was the lack of the black so I took the same flower I'd used earlier and this time stamped some black um, flowers around the page edged my sentiment and then decided that my flowers needed to stand out a bit more so I added some yellow Posca pen into the centres. To help tie the two sides of the pages and all the elements together I then got out my Dina Wakely white gloss spray and added some splatters. this point it was meant to be finished but after I had finished the video I still wasn't happy with my background so what I did was I freehand drew some stems for my flowers and some leaves and that made me much happier. Thank you for watching please do like and subscribe and until next time bye bye.